I was actually having a very good day today. It started um, around 2 in the morning yesterday. I was thinking about ice cream and um, God and man, you know, deus et humanitas. And why quantum particles behave as waves sometimes. And um, then a thick Russian accent asks me, what is the square root of 144? And I say 13 because, you know, square root of 144. And turns out I have been sleeping and it was uh, 4.45. And we had the lightning talks. Uh, we have an amazing lineup today. Thank you, Anil, for the speakers. Uh, first off, we have uh, Charles and Quinn. If you could set up, please. Charles and Quinn run a company called SourceGraph. Uh, now, we all know energy, you know, cannot be created or destroyed. Um, also, pictures of us drinking and being really silly once they're up on the internet stay there. As does code. SourceGraph is a startup that lets users search for code. And uh, companies like Google and Facebook and LinkedIn are using SourceGraph. And uh, SourceGraph pulls code from all the major code repositories, like hundreds and thousands of lines of code, from Bitbucket, from GitHub, from Stack Overflow. And uh, these guys are like under 30, 26 and 28 years old, and they're already changing the world. <laughs> you have the con, guys. Cool. Um, well, just want to say, guys, thank you so much for having us. Uh, Quinn and I just drove down um, from San Francisco. Um, all is well up there, but it's also nice to be uh, back in the South Bay. I grew up in Palo Alto. Um, and I must say, you guys always routinely have the better weather uh, when it comes down to it. Um, so to tell you a little bit about SourceGraph, um, just to get an idea, how many of you are programmers? A few. OK. Well, then, um, then we have something very cool to show you. Um, so real quickly. Um, as far as kind of programmers go, like how many of you have open source projects that are up on maybe GitHub or other sites? Yeah, a lot. Okay. Um, so Quinn is going to basically show you what SourceGraph is, um, and then I'm going to give you a kind of a quick overview. I know a lot of you basically are working on your company right now or your founders, um, and as co-creator and community manager of SourceGraph, I'm just going to give you a couple things that you might want to think about um, in terms of growing your user base and um, just kind of establishing a community around your project. So Quinn, if you want to kind of show them. Um, real quickly, what SourceGraph yeah. is. All right, so SourceGraph is useful to every programmer here, most likely. So I'm going to tell you how I use SourceGraph to find code examples, because that's what it's best for. We index all the code on GitHub, and we can show you everywhere that a function is used. So something that I was just doing recently, um, I was writing in Go, because we use Go. And I want to know, how do I make a HTTP request with a JSON body? So we have this search that looks over all of GitHub and other code. And so I can just type in, uh, you know, I know it's this new request. I can type. And this is actually every function called new request on GitHub. And you know, I might get the info I need here, but I can pull it up. And what it'll show is the function itself on the left, and then just literally 34,000 examples of how people actually use it. And that's the best way to learn. We like to say that the, best, the right example is worth 1,000 lines of documentation. So that's one. You can find really quick usage examples. You can also browse code. And you get like quick tool tips. You can click on this, and it'll jump the definition. This works in Go. It works in uh, Java as well. Here's the AWS SDK. How many of you have written stuff in Java for the AWS SDK? Yeah, it's like these really long, complicated things. But we can show you how you know describe reserved instances is actually used. And uh, you can didn't mean to click that. You can uh, just over on the right. The demo gods are not happy right now. Yeah, so just over on the right, you can see you can uh, see an example there. You can click on it to see it in full context. So again, like you just save a lot of time with SourceGraph. I hope you all find it useful. And Charles is going to share a little bit more, and then uh, I have one more thing at the end. Um, so real quickly, so I mean, just kind of curious, how many of you are like just starting? You're just working on your product, and you don't even have any users. Because like, that a problem for challenge? All right. So um, SourceGraph started in November of 2013, right? And obviously, a lot of people had projects on GitHub, but maybe hadn't heard of SourceGraph. So um, just to kind of give you a quick idea of like some of the things that we do. First of all, um, you know, like we are so passionate about the open source world. Like that is what we're ultimately connected to. So we basically host one meetup per month. Um, we invite anybody with a really cool open source project uh, just to come and share or debut or just kind of talk about like their passion. Um, and when we first started this, I mean, maybe there were like 20 people in the meetup group. Um, we're almost at 100, and we're aiming to double that in the next month. Um, so that's that's one thing, is just start throwing events. I mean, obviously, you guys are familiar with 
to meet up and the idea of like and target and whatnot. Um, the second thing that we really should do is target Hacker News and figure out like what your angle is going to be. So one of the things that we figured out is that um, GopherCon was going on in Colorado, right? And one of the things that we observed is that there wasn't there wasn't a blog. Like if you weren't at GopherCon, you had no idea what was going on. So Quinn Beyond just basically set up a blog just to basically comment on some of the new things that were being debuted there. Um, and we ended up getting like tens of thousands of views literally overnight. So also kind of figure out like figure out not only the community that you're trying to, to talk to, but also be able to add value just by talking about it. Um, and the last thing I'm gonna say is also just like free t-shirts. So one thing, um, for the first five people who tweeted us today, we'll send you a free t-shirt, um, but also like just buy like 500 of them and just give them out. Um, at some point, here's what happens. One person sees source graph and they say, oh, that's cool. Two people see source graph and they think like, oh, like I'm starting to pick up on something. And when you start to see sort of three times, whether it's on the news or you see somebody wearing a shirt, you think like it, it, it resonates with you, right? There's like there's a sticking point. Um, and so the more you can kind of hit on these like three things, um, the more people will start to use your product, they'll start to use user feedback. Um, and one of the things that we do once a week is we just bring in a user and say like, how are you using SourceGraph, right? Um, we record these, we analyze them, and we basically inform the next product cycle. Um, but what this creates is not only like a better connection with our users, but we also are able to create a better source graph because of that. Um, so those are just like some of the three actionable things you can just start doing right now. Um, I'm at Charles underscore uh, Vickery on Twitter, so please, also if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, it's it's very important to think about your community at this spot. Yeah. Yeah. So one last thing, uh, you can also do code reviews on SourceGraph. So you pull request to GitHub. We actually show you uh, what are the functions that changed or were deleted. Um, so we're going to be building this out more, but it can save you a lot of time too. So try it out and let us know what you think. Yeah. Thanks, Hacker Dojo. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, should I clear the chat up, please? Uh, next up, we have Shotaro. Now, here's a quick question. What hardware platform do you think uh, Objective-C runs on? Objective-C, what, what hardware does Objective-C run on? OK. <laughs> um, Objective-C is basically uh, Apple. And uh, Shotaro took a meeting with Tim Cook today. And he's, he's figured out a way to run Objective-C on bare metal. So um, this morning, I got Tim Cook, and then I got live <laughs> six. So yeah, I was at the morning at the Palo Alto, and then uh, I was at the 4 a.m., uh, no, 5 a.m. at the uh, 5 morning at the Palo Alto, and I met Tim Cook. I got the iPhone 6, so, and also, I realize I'm on the TV. So, see. <laughs> hey, it's me. <laughs> so, you know, maybe Object C God tell me something. Okay, so. Uh, so. Uh, my name is Shotaro Uchida, and I was doing the. I'm a Java enthusiast. I'm, I'm, I like Java very much. I am doing Java for, I think it's five years or six years maybe. I do a lot of Java stuff in the US. So some somebody somebody said told me that you're crazy, but I did. Actually, I did a USB HDI stuck in Java, TCP IP in Java, I drew and uh, JB or everything you know. But I realized that. Java is actually uh, always into the optic C, so now I'm very, very interested in optic C. So you know, all those guys knows the optic C is like this. It's beautiful, you know. Once you once you see the optic source code and say, "Wow, it's so beautiful." And then I also like Arduino. So what if I run well, actual the, uh, you know, it's. You know, everyone wants want to do this, right? <laughs> so I, I look after exit solutions. Actually, there's uh, some 
uh, solutions. So one is a bare metal, it's, which is a language C, and one is Arduino. <laughs> Arduino is not the C, actual C, it's like a Java-like language, so, and there's embed, Java MUE, and there's also Puzzle, it, which is JavaScript, but there's no object C, so why not object C? So then I realized, oh, I should do that. So yeah, like, like Lexi said, everyone thinks that Objective-C is actually Apple thing, but it's not. It's, it's back in the 80s, Objective-C is actually the standard language, but Apple's acquired it, and it's, everyone thinks now Apple thing, but let me, sh let me show you how different languages. So Java is actually taught in the JVM, and C++, there's a C++ runtime on there, and a C++ on there. But Objective-C is actually C. So there is no C++, there is no JVM. So Objective-C is pure C language. And all you need is uh, uh, port some Objective-C runtime in there, and then you can write Objective-C. So that's a beautiful thing. And you know what? Uh, there's uh, certain things why Objective-C is better. So first of all, uh, C++, it sucks. And and second thing, uh, you can use pure C anytime, anywhere. So that's a good thing for the embedded stuff. And third one, it also means that you can use assembly anytime. And also, purple object oriented language, but still faster than Java. And final, the C++. <laughs> There's some disadvantage. Uh, one is the large memory footprint, and uh, two for message lookup, which is very, uh, sometimes it's slow, because uh, object C is when you call the functions, always searching for the message from the database. So that's that's kind of uh, not good. So there's a big three uh, objects at runtime. One is Apple's, one is a uh, lived object C, which is uh, outdated, possibly. And three was the new stuff. But I use a uh, runtime called the Object FW, which is uh, developed by, developed by the, some German guy. And uh, this is pretty portable runtime, which it w actually it works in PSP, we and needed OBS, and also the plan is supported, and uh, it's open source actually. <coughs> so the requirement is uh, like one mega RAM and a one mega flash. So I, I got this board, this is from the side apps, which is a running a complex M4, and uh, it has an external bus interface, so I can do a, a big memory, I can connect the big memory on there. And this ultra low power, and actually this board has big memory, like four megabytes RAM and uh, sixty megabytes no flash. So I can do the. I can actually I was I have success to running the object C on this board, and I use this uh, the broken environment. Here's a some I can I cannot show you demo today, but I can show you some uh, screenshot. This is actually Eclipse, and you can you know you can actually the back of the C on the Eclipse. And all test case is working. So the next thing is actually I, I've done this threading support. I've actually done this. Support. Okay, and uh, so get support by support. And I'm gonna do a Kickstarter soon. So that's that's my <coughs> and one more thing I want to I want to announcement to you. Uh, so the, this this meetup is actually the big, one of the biggest uh, low level meetup in Japan. So uh, I wanna I wanna start this meetup in here, Hack at Dojo. So if you want to interested in, please please talk to me. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Shataro. Um, anybody know any memory pointer jokes? <laughs> Next up, we have Ben, who is going to talk to us about entrepreneurship outside of the valley. Uh, ben has been a Hacker Dojo member and he's an integral part of the Lightning Talks team now. He looks after the video and the video editing. Uh, do you want to uh, say a few lines about your own startup before you oh, give yeah. it up? Okay. Yeah. And the book. Okay. <laughs> oh, I do not have a PowerPoint because today I'm here to talk about ideas rather than show you things. And so a little bit of background about myself. Um, I worked here at the Dojo on a smartphone security startup. We use 
kind of behavior to prove that you are who you say you are and can actually block you or log you out if something strange happens. Um, if you're interested, come talk to me later, called Zents. Uh, we are getting some big traction with large enterprise companies. So my back, oh, I'm also writing a book on how to lead a student organization, um, which I'll talk about in a moment. So my background is, I grew up in Washington, D.C., and I didn't know this, but when I turned like 20, my dad's like, hey, I was a venture capitalist. And I was like, dad, you never told me this. He's like, well, you know, I, I didn't want to, to sway you into entrepreneurship, but now that you're doing it by yourself already, I might as well share with you some backstory. And so I was curious to learn that for my entire childhood, I thought Silicon Valley was the place to be for entrepreneurship, for startups. And that is still probably very, very true for most industries, for most people. Uh, this is a great place to start a company, get funding, and continue. But other cities, um, Washington, D.C., uh, Nashville, Hong Kong, are all places that I have been and I have seen entrepreneurship thriving and you know, it has a different culture than it has around here. So in, in DC, things come from the kind of large technology companies. You're making software that helps government, that helps defense contractors, that helps security. And it's almost you're, you're, you're being funded by the big companies you're selling to. So there's, a very less of a, there's much less of a VC community. There's more of a um, companies will give you research contracts and they'll, they'll help push you forward until ultimately you're big enough to get growth stage funds. Oh, there's, obviously there's, there's some seeds funding anywhere you go. Uh, when I went to Nashville, I went to Vanderbilt University for undergrad and was amazed that there wasn't a startup scene at the school. Uh, I didn't really know much about Nashville at the time, but I started the entrepreneurship club, actually the first entrepreneurship club at the school and discovered that everyone has something they can think about. Everyone has good ideas, and oftentimes they just don't know where to go to get help. So if you have any friends who chat about you know, topics, if they think about business ideas, really just help them along and get them to the point where they too can really take their dreams and push them forward. Uh, the Entrepreneurship Club at Vandy now has over 200 students. We've had talks with CEOs of Fortune 500 companies um, and your large startups and have um, helped launch four companies in the last year um, and within a year and a half of its starting. Um, I also spent some time in Hong Kong. So, uh, so the, the scene in, in Nashville is very, very different from here. Uh, Nashville is a very creative place. Um, there's the highest number of people who do graphic design, web development, music, publishing, anywhere in the country. So that means that here everyone talks about technology as the future. There talk, people talk about technology as a means to create the future of art. And I think that's, um, there's just so many, so there are so many cities. Um, Google just gave a million dollars to 20 different startup accelerators all over the country to foster an individual creative environment for people to start companies. Um, and some of them do this dramatically differently than they do in Silicon Valley. So if you're looking for options for where to move, where to start your next company, consider that um, Silicon Valley is a great place. But sometimes it seems close to me. Sometimes intellectual property is protected very heavily. Uh, people don't want to talk about what they're doing. Um, I don't think that's true in many other places in the country. And I've seen firsthand that if you want to try something, and your friends, maybe they say, oh, I can't do this because I'm not in the valley. That's not true anymore. So if you know anyone who wants to consider their ideas, push forward and really help something along, um, it can be done anywhere. And it can be done sometimes with more openness, sometimes with slightly more difficulty, sometimes with slightly less access to technology and people. But ultimately, the goal is to help everyone else around you take their ideas and push it to the next level. And it's not just here in Silicon Valley. It's all over the country and the world. That's my inspirational talk about it. Thank you, Ben. Um, MIT Technology Review has a... Uh, next up, we also have Ben. If you could set up, please. 
Uh, ben is part of a startup called Genie, along with Larry and Giovanna and Charles. Okay, uh, Genie is a scheduling uh, assistant, and uh, right now the Hacker Dojo meeting room scheduling is being done by their startup. So what uh, Ben is going to talk about is how we can book the meeting rooms, and uh, we will be taking questions. Uh, after this. Thank you. All right. Okay. Maybe it takes a few minutes to come up, but um, all right. So yeah, like, um, thank you. Everybody want to stretch a little bit and get the blood moving? I'm going to. So um, I just actually am a very new Hacker Dojo member, and I've been pretty pleased with the facilities here, especially at the height. If you guys want a nice space, check that out. That's new. It's a secret. A lot of people don't know. We're glad that we have Lynn Rose with Larry, so we got in there, it's a very nice spot. Um, one of the cool things about Hacker Dojo, when I first came in, was that like I saw that, that Bitcoin machine was like, all right, 2014, it's the right thing, right vibe, I come in here. Then, but the thing is that, first time I need a conference, right? I talked to Larry, and he's <laughs> like, hey guy, sign up right here. That's how you book a conference room. 1960, <laughs> book a conference room, 1960. What's up with that, right? So we think we come up with a better solution to do it. First thing obvious is, how about this? You put it cool, if we have facilities like uh, Google or Facebook, you know, have this in front of the conference room, piece of the paper. Make it a little bit more. <laughs> Just, you know, click here. Look at the time, click here. The room is yours. Of course, uh, it's going to a little bit follow up. Make sure you send the email to confirm with you on your Hacker Dojo member, uh, your Hacker Dojo email address. Make sure that you're a real member. I heard that that's sometimes a problem. That strangers come in and start getting a room. So, wow, bring it up to the first, uh, the current century, right? So, however, the problem is that, like, well, like a lot of members, I'm not here all day. Like, Am I supposed to drive over here when I need a room and I just book it you know, and then drive back home? No, you don't have to. Well, there's a URL. You can do the same thing online. So you just come to if you're at home, you need to meet somebody next week, you need a room, you go to this URL, you log in with your Hacker Dojo um, email address, and you click a time, half an hour, okay? That's it. You got the room. Right? Now, one other thing is that, do you suppose to book a room for yourself? And just call the room and so that you can have your private office here and stuff here for the hide and something else? <coughs> we usually have the room because we want to meet with somebody else, right? We have somebody kind of coming in and say, hey, let's uh, you know, get a room and meet up, right? The problem is that, well, how are we going to coordinate it? So one way is the cheating way. I go here. I find three spots, I block all of them. I hog three spots. And then I email my friend and say, hey, I got to find these three spots. Come into Hacker Dojo with me. Everybody else screw? I got three spots. Great. Really shouldn't do that. It's not the nice thing to do, right? Yeah, the other thing is hop on the phone, open up this page with your friends, and say, hey, let's meet. Well, what time are you available? Look at your calendar, look at over here. You know, switch between the, your calendar here and your friend go all the way and then you finally got a time and you, okay, we got a book. It works, I mean, but your friend might not be around, you know, you call them and they're not around, you text them, they don't answer, what do you do? What would be really nice is that if the room comes with somebody that actually go and figure it out with my friend what time and just book everybody, that would be nice. That, that's the 21st century, that's the future, right? Room, go figure it out with my friend when everybody's available, and just put it all on our calendar. Let's do that. How do we do it? So, I log in with my Hacker Dojo. Oh, am I blocking anybody here? Um, email address, and it happens here. You know, sometimes people send you email and say, let's meet. This is an example of it. My friend, Arizona, wants to meet with me, and she's wondering if we can get a room. I said, sure, why not? You know, that's the benefit of being a Hacker Dojo member. We can get a room, and now this is the point that I'm going to be 
negotiating with her and checking out the room and see when it's available and figure all this stuff out. No, don't do all that. Let Jeannie figure it out. The room comes with an assistant. They help you book the room, find your friends available, your availability. Get all things together, put everybody's calendar. All done, right? And it's easy. I just go and reply back to Arizona. And by the way, I'm going to CC in the room. It's called Meet Hacker Dojo, uh, meet at hackerdojo.com. I'm CC in the room. I'm going to tell Arizona, hi, AZ. Yeah. Great. Just go over there. Let's see if we can get a room at Hacker Dojo. No. And then we'll tell Chini, find us a time for, by the way, um, Arizona say, how about the time next Thursday, right? Okay, Jeannie, find us time for next Thursday. Yeah. And get us a room. Yeah, you don't even need to say that because you're telling the room. Why are you asking the room to go organize it? It's so that we can get the room too. So that's all you have to do because the room comes with an assistant to figure all this stuff out for you. So, uh, okay, so you send the email. And pretty much at this point, <coughs> you're gonna figure it out. And I'll make it real quick. Uh, so I'm running just a little short time. Basically, what happens right now is that if you give it a minute, then your friend Arizona is gonna get an email from the room trying to figure it out, you know, with her what time is available. And it will check the room's time, check my time, figure it all out. She picks the time and it will also tell me, and I go verify the time, and then boom, it's on everybody's calendar. So, do I have a minute? Okay. Let me just give you a previous one that I've sent that I've sent that looks like this. You get an email like this, you click on it. It will ask you like, hey, do you ask Arizona, my friend, if you want, if uh, you know, she wants uh, Gigi to check her calendar, and you don't have to check it. You pick the time, and then bam, that's it. It's booked. So, and then once it's booked, it's you see this one. It's on Ben's calendar, who's me. It's on Arizona's calendar, and it's on the Hacker Dojo calendar. Thank you, Ben. Have we all figured out how to book the meeting rooms? No. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have Ben present again? Did you guys see Eureka by any chance? The smart house that spoke. All right, here's what you do. You're blocking the screen. Get out of the way of the screen. All right. Go to hackerdojo.com, my dashboard. Reserve meeting room. Okay. We're going to log out here so we can log back in. We get the sign in. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me add myself here. Hopefully, I type it in right. Okay. Find the. Uh, <laughs> Go to next week, Wednesday, find your time, or Tuesday, click, half an hour, one hour, two hours, whatever, click OK, and you're there. If you need help, there's a help button, click help, there's a nice PDF with all the documentation, you're good to go. So Larry, are you booking a, the private uh, conference room or what, what are you booking? So this is for the meeting room in the hallway, right? We've got events that you can have in the big room, in the, in the classroom, in the conference room. 
The meeting room is the room in the hallway. It's got the piece of paper on the wall, right? So now you can do it online. You can do it at a console. We're going to have this console installed right outside the door. So you don't have to fill out a piece of paper. Right? You just click on the time you want it, and it's yours. And like Ben was explaining, you can also do the email interface. If you have any issues or problems, we also have an email address right there for uh, for help, and you can send you a email. More questions? Anybody else? All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry and the Genie team. This is going to be very helpful for us. Um, one last thing before we wrap up, uh, we have Mustafa and uh, to thank for the pizza, Mustafa and his company. Shout out the name of your company. You go now. That's the company. Mobile food order platform. Demo next week. So we have the pizza first and the demo next week. <laughs> have a nice weekend, guys. Live long and prosper. Thanks for joining us. Mustafa. Thank <laughs> you.